Give to Barrett. Cut back over the middle of the 25 to the 20. Breaks a tackle to the 15. Stop, starts 10-5. Touchdown, Lions. Holy mackerel. Throws end zone. It is caught. What a play back there in the back of the end zone by TJ Hawkinson. You're listening to the One Pride Cast. Welcome into the One Pride Cast. This is Danny Rogers, team reporter, reporting from Mobile, Alabama, because the Detroit Lions coaching staff is down here for the next five or six days. Uh, leading the American squad, going up against the national squad, coached by Robert Sala and those New York Jets. So this is going to be a really fun week. Uh, joining me now is Tim Twentyman, live from the convention center. Not really live, but I wish the podcast was live. Uh, Tim, you, we've talked about this before. You've done a few of these senior bowls. This is day one for us. Players checked in Sunday. We're still getting a handle on all the players that are here so far. Um, but I got to know, who are you really looking forward to watching in practices this week? Well, for me, it's more like position groups. You know, when you look at the Lions, like, you know, what are the needs? And it's hard to say because free agency comes before the draft. So some of these needs might be, you know, taken care of a little bit more before we get to the draft. But obviously, you have to start with the quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. You know, I think this is a rare year where it's a, a senior driven quarterback class. And I think six of the top seven. Seven guys who are in this draft are down here in Mobile for the week. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that's obviously fun. You know, Jared Goff played really well the second half of the year, and he, he's obviously going into 2022 as, as the Lions starting quarterback, at least that's what I assume. But still, I mean, with Tim Boyle and um, David Blau being free agents, they might look to go young, maybe get that successor down the line, get a young quarterback to start grooming. And, you know, when you look at the guys here, one of the guys that really interests me and who the Lions will, you know, be up close and personal with is, is Malik Willis, yes. the quarterback from Liberty. You know, that kind of dual threat guy, kind of where this league is trending now, you know, through mm-hmm. for what 5,000 yards over the last two years and, and rushed for 1,800 yards, a ton of touchdowns, raw. And, and when you look at a guy like that, you know, who played at Liberty, you know, transferred from Auburn, mm-hmm. went to Liberty, but now can he handle going against cornerbacks from Georgia, Alabama, you know, those type of top level talent. And I think that'll be really interesting to me to see how he and, and the other quarterbacks really perform and who separates themselves down here and says, himself up for the top of the draft and then you know edge rushers you know when you when you look at the Lions situation you know you saw it you were there for every game 30 mm-hmm. sacks now they dealt with injuries there but you know that was the third fewest in the league and so I think they've got to address that that edge I think you know they like some of the young guys you're going to get Romeo back but the Achilles injuries are tough you know how quick is he going to be able to be back and is he still going to be the same player Charles Harris the leading sacker he's a free agent so um, you know when you start to look at some of the edge guys you know you know Majai Sand from, from Cincinnati, um, Jermaine Johnson, who the Lions are coaching, a talented guy out of Florida State, kind of that, that mid to late first round type mm-hmm. of talent. Well, look, the Lions have that pick at the end of the first round. So yeah. now you're talking about receivers, edge rushers, those kind of guys, maybe one of these quarterbacks being mm-hmm. there too. So I think the the edge guys, the wide receivers, it's not as talented a wide receiver class, but there's some, some talent still down here too, and we'll see who separates themselves. Mm-hmm. But I think quarterbacks, wide receivers, and, and edge guys are the guys that I have my eye on probably you know, first thing on Tuesday when practices start. I cannot wait. Yes, today is Monday, day one. So uh, the players are getting to meet the staffs. And uh, I saw head, co- well, he's the acting head coach this <laughs> week, Deuce Staley. Typically, he's in the running back slash assistant head coaching role. So uh, Coach Staley is going to take over the head coaching duties. Not totally sure what that looks like just yet. I feel like it's, it's a by committee week because you are inheriting what? 50, 60 guys, yeah. college guys, and you got to figure out, okay, what's the best way we can utilize them to get to see their talents on full display. Yeah. And you get it for display. four days, three days on a practice field before yes. you're setting up a game. Right. So yeah, you, yeah, your point is 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 totally correct. It's it's a it's a tough ask and it's a quick turnaround. So it'll be interesting to see kind of how this staff handles the, the quick turnaround, how right. ready they are for mm-hmm. Saturday. Uh, yeah, I, I wasn't sure. This is my first senior bowl. I wasn't sure the scope of this entire operation. This is an operation. It's a huge undertaking for an NFL team to take on uh, during this really really critical development stage where you're looking for talent to come onto the roster. Um, so we are at the convention center down here in downtown Mobile. Like I said, 
coaches just met their teams for the first time. You're not going to mention what the weather's like down here? Oh, though? gosh. I have sun beaming on my back right now. I it's know. It's hot down here. It is. It's about 60s? 60 at least. Yeah. It's, a, it's Aren't beautiful. are they supposed to get like 8 to 12 inches back home? I think we're we not got, supposed to talk about that. Did you get that email from our boss yeah, today? Was I did it, see you that. You were on there? 8 to 12 inches. Whenever you're hearing this, if it's snowing, I really apologize to you guys. I don't. <laughs> I don't. We are, don't worry, fam. My we are wife is giving me here. a little bit of crap being down here for a week in 60s while yeah. she's got to be, you know, snow plowing the driveway. So. Oh, it's beautiful right now. So it she, is. okay, she's not going to shovel the driveway. She'll, she'll snow plow. I got my neighbor on the case. I think okay. he's going to help, he's going to help her out. Husband of the year. Up. I know. Let's yep. go. I got the neighbor all set up. Yeah. 12 inches gone. Boom. But she's a teacher, so she doesn't really mind the snow. She's she, wanting oh, the snow days. Oh, so her and my oh son just my. sitting at home. Yeah, she, she's praying for a little bit of snow. You get those snow days as a teacher, All too. All right, I'm praying for Mrs. 20 minutes <laughs> But well. back to the Senior Bowl. Back to the Senior Bowl. I mean, the weather is beautiful. We might have a couple days rain. No biggie. There's a nice little indoor, kind of outdoor training facility that yep. the players will be able to uh, practice underneath. But uh, in terms of the elevated coaches for the Lions, I said Deuce Staley is now in that head coaching role. You've got Ben Johnson, tight ends coach, who's assuming the uh, offensive coordinator role. And then you have Aubrey Pleasant uh, this past season, who's who's going to take over the defensive coordinating. Um, so are you going to pay attention to how these coaches – coach this week at all yeah a little bit I think it'll be interesting I think it'll be fun for Dan you know with, with Deuce taking over the head coaching duties and I think that'll be good for Deuce come Saturday you know game management timeouts mm-hmm. you know running the show for with, with that headset on being the head coach and then just you know being in front of the guys in the in the meeting room being that voice I think mm-hmm. that, that that's good training I mean that's Dan did the same thing in New Orleans for for, for five seasons mm-hmm. and now he's doing the same thing with Deuce and so you know as, as much as you can put them out in front of the media put them in that 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 room in front of the the team and and kind of just let them navigate and and you know find out what their coaching style is I think that's good and that'll be great for Deuce and if you're Dan I think that's great because he seems to me like he would be great this week in like a hands-on role at practice like can you imagine Dan because he doesn't have to he doesn't really have those head coaching duties right so he has kind of bop around everything yeah you can bop around stuff you can get in there you can do some technique stuff Mm -hmm. I mean you know maybe you can get into it that over the season no because as a head coach I think you're you're kind of you have to take it all in, right? You've got yeah. to, you know, you'll, they're always at midfield. They'll wander over to a position group or something, but they've got to keep kind of a yeah. pulse on everything Head that's on going level. on. And I think this allows maybe Dan an opportunity to, uh, hey, let's go shoot in some, you know, hand technique stuff with the tight ends. Yeah. Maybe jumps in there or whatever to, to show him some stuff. Yeah. Um, so I think that'll be interesting to see how kind of Dan approaches this week with, mm-hmm. with, I don't want to say the pressure off because it's not really a pressure event, but there's, there's, you know, he's an advisor. He's kind yep. of taking a back seat to this, and and I think that'll be interesting to see kind of how he decides he wants mm-hmm. to play that at practice and, and maybe have a little bit fun. And you know, with Ben, I think we kind of figured this was going to be the case. You know, he was elevated to the passing game coordinator the second half of the season, and you look what happened to this offense when Dan called plays and Ben Johnson kind of, you know, was had a, a bigger part of that passing game. You just look at the results, yep. and so. Um, Um, It'll be interesting. We'll see if Dan keeps those play calling duties and Mm -hmm. then elevates Ben Johnson to offensive coordinator. That's kind of what I think is going to happen. Do you think, do you have a timeline? I feel like people want to know when. Yeah, they want to know when. I don't think there's any rush. I mean, I think you want to get through this week, Right. um, you know, get this done. And I think in the weeks after, Mm -hmm. when when you're thinking about an internal hire, I don't think there's that much pressure to to do it. And the fact that there hasn't been a whole lot of news out there of the Lions interviewing offensive coordinators, that's not to say they haven't done it, but it hasn't been, you know, part of the news cycle. So um, to me, I think that the natural choice you saw the results on the field the second half of the season. You talk to any player, any coach about Ben, and it's about his creativity mm-hmm. and the offensive mind he has. And it looks like he's kind of ascending into this role. And I thought when they elevate him for this week, that's a perfect sign that, hey, I think, you know, yeah. this is probably what's going to happen. And then, um, you know, defensive wise, you know, with Aubrey, you know, he, he's such a, a terrific player 
coach in the sense that he really listens to the players. I think he connects mm -hmm. with those defensive backs really, really well. And so what a great opportunity for him now to get in front of the room. Um, you know, Aaron Glenn's going to, you know, take a backseat, let him do those duties. And again, like we talked about with Dan, it'll be interesting to see how Aaron's in there, right? Former right. player, right? Spent 15 yeah. years, was an all pro, pro bowl guy. You know, is he going to want to mix it in there a little mm -hmm. bit and, and kind of really get involved with those yeah. defensive backs, especially with some technique stuff. And st so, you know, I, I think it's, it's interesting, interesting how you know it all played out it'll be interesting to see kind of what um you know dan and 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 ben and and um aaron how they all kind of treat this and, and and how it all works out during mm -hmm. the week and and then translates to the field on on saturday but it, it's fun i like the new format here i think it just it, it elevates guys who you want to start elevating in those roles eventually anyway so it kind of just you know gets a kick start for for what they hope will be their next steps right i i was going to take the complete opposite approach of these coaches being able to kind of chill out at practice. You know, Aaron that Glenn is too. usually very vocal. Aubrey Pleasant will never be not vocal. So we know he'll always be um, out there. It's entertaining to watch. I'm not going to lie when you're midway through the season, and you're just trudging, trudging along. Like he's really great, really great coach, educator, vocalizes it great so i'm just yeah i was i was i thought they'd take more of a backseat approach but you're be. saying maybe more hands-on i would love to see it on. i would like i would like to see it but yeah I, I, i've actually seen it both ways with, with with sometimes head coaches you know they're they're more snoozing around mm -hmm. snoozing around excuse me with the you know other 31 teams and catching up with head coaches and scouts yes. and former guys it's and a, not really paying attention to what's going this I is mean, a big social yes. event we are not going to downplay it is that. very they, i mean all 32 teams here here all 32 general best managers, friends everywhere coaches coach yeah and so this is one of the, the, it's like the combine too, you know, where everybody okay. meets at St. Elmo's, you know, everybody's at, at I have never everybody's been, everybody's at I'm Wenzel's so downtown here in Mobile okay. on a Friday night, yeah. you know, that's just kind of what it okay, is. Okay, so that's where we're all going. Yeah, Thank so you for letting you me know. that's where you want to go, you're going to Wenzel's, yep. Yeah, I didn't know that, that, I didn't know what my plans were. So. Yeah, no, but it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. I mean, it's, 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 it's such a productive week, but it's, it, I think you're right. It is a very much laid back mm -hmm. week, but something tells me, I don't know. I don't know if Dan Campbell's late that got, I know is going to be laid back or he's going to just be like, okay, now I can have some fun right. and, and get in there a little bit and mix right. it up. And maybe the teacher comes out in Dan Campbell. Ooh. And by no means is this a laid back week for the players who are entering into a, one of the biggest weeks of, of their lives here. Uh, they are getting their first crack at the NFL interviews constantly it, we've been trying to track down some players their schedules are jam-packed oh yeah so what in your mind does this uh, uh kind of look like to players to me it's kind of like an ota schedule or even i during the regular season it's an nfl schedule where from morning to night you're in a classroom learning about players or you're out there practicing um so how much does that really just look like the NFL in terms of these next three to four days for these players this is their first dress rehearsal yeah. you know and I I, I I like in I think this event is a little bit different than the combine because mm -hmm. you do get the scheduled meetings at the combine right you get the yes. on-field work but this is more football it's not guys in shorts running yeah. 40s and lifting 100%. weights this is football and the meetings at the combine you've had so much time from the end of your college season in the prep up to the combine that they're so taught with those meetings mm, and what to say yes. what teams are going to ask you That's a good point. and i don't think there's as much time in between this one mm -mm. Um, and, and so I think teams maybe get a little bit more out of this. And, and like I talked about with practice, you're actually seeing football this week. Yeah. It's the only thing in the offseason calendar leading up to the draft where you actually see guys not in shorts running straight lines. Mm -hmm. They're actually performing. And you see guys rise and fall off draft boards. Wow. And the Lions get a great inside track at this because it's not just what they see on the field. 30 teams get to see what they see just on the field at yep. practice. And everybody can see that. Mm -hmm. I mean – Joe Clark in Mobile, Alabama can pay yeah, you sure and get can. into the stadium you and watch will. practice and see what 30 teams are seeing. Correct. The Lions get to see how a guy handles a meeting, mm -hmm. how a guy handles information, and can he translate that information to the field? Yeah. Is he a good teammate? Mm -hmm. Are they Do showing guys up like on time? Him? Yeah. Do other players gravitate toward him? Is he a loner? Right. You know, I mean, you just you get to know the player mm -hmm. coaching things that the other 30 teams just don't yeah 
And I think it's some of those inside little information things that I think are so vital this week and mm -hmm. give you such an advantage if you're the Detroit Lions and, and the New York Jets. Yeah. And I think that's the great advantage. So for players, it's, it's jam-packed. It's meetings, and then your practice, and then you're breaking down tape, mm -hmm. and then it's interviews with all 32 teams at night. And then you've got all the social events down mm -hmm. here in Mobile that a lot of the players are going to be involved yeah. in too. So it's, it's, it's really busy, but it's really a week-long interview and it's a that's football insane. interview. And I think that's where the real value is for these players and, and for these, these teams, especially mm -hmm. Lions and Jets. So these guys are gonna be tired is what They're you're tired. saying. They're tired, yeah. They're gonna be real tired. And because it's, it's, it's a little bit different when you're, you know, you go through a practice, but if you go through a practice and you see 32 general managers sitting there watching your one-on-one -on -one pass rush rep against an offensive about it. line, yeah. And it gets, and look, you'll see some push and shoving. You'll see a little bit of skirmishes, especially in the pass rushes with the offense and defensive linemen. Someone gets a little high. Heck, look, you're going to see some pushing. You're going to see some go. shoving. Yeah. yeah. There's some there's some trash talk. And I mean, you know, this is some serious stuff for these guys. It's, yeah. it's a week long interview process and, and it's football and it, it, it's really fun. It's one of the, my, my more favorite events to cover just because you get an opportunity to watch these guys mm -hmm. and how they perform. I, I, I can still remember Aaron Donald coming down here and just dominating this yeah. thing, you know, back in life, what was it, mm -hmm. 2013 or whenever it was, it was, it was amazing. And I had never really known, you know, I'd heard, you'd heard of Aaron Donald during yeah. the year, but to see him live in person and dominate the way he did, you were like, oh my gosh, this guy is going to be pretty good. Right. Levi Onzerike last year mm -hmm. was one of those guys for me on the first day. I was like, whoa, that guy's pretty unblockable. Now he suffered a you know soft tissue injury, injury unfortunately, and, and didn't it. play the rest of the, of the week. But that's kind of what, where I first got my eye on Levi Onzerike. Like, okay. Mm -hmm. you know, I remember even going out and after and talking to him and doing a story on him after yeah. that first day because I was impressed. So that's and then the, the stuff. happened to draft him. And then the happened to draft him. Yeah, it, was, it, it worked out. But that's the stuff that is different about this event it's it, it makes this u event unique and why it's so fun to be down here i love it all right last but not least and this will not be the last time i ask you this who would you like to see the lions take at number two overall in wow. the 2022 nfl draft okay i have three names oh what yeah okay fine. i got three okay so ass. obviously you have the pass rushers right okay. you got aiden hutchinson and, and Kayvon thibodeau correct but neither me, are here yes neither are here um and my my third guy isn't here as well, but I think this is a guy that I really like, and I think he's going to crush the pre-draft process. Like he's going to crush the combine. I think he's going to be one of those guys that's like a unicorn. Hot mic, coach. Be careful. Uh oh, yeah, we got hot mics. <laughs> Dan Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, th I I like Notre Dame's Kyle Hamilton. Okay. I think I've heard that a couple times. I think he's a safety. Mm -hmm. I think you can move him down in the box. He can be a linebacker. I think he's you know, he's six foot four, two hundred twenty five pounds. I think he's gonna run Is a, he six foot four? Six foot three Listen, maybe. Okay. Some measurements came out today. What was he? For, no, for the senior bowl. For for some guys here at the senior bowl. Yes. They're a little off from They're their roster. Off. Yeah. Well so it's always an inch inflated. Yeah. Okay, well if he's a couple six, or two inches. If he's six three, two twenty, let's let's go conservative okay. here, all right? All right. We'll, we'll go off my 6'4", 225. We'll go 6'3", 220. But, but he's going to be, you know, a 4'3 type guy. I think, like I said, you, wow. with the creative defensive coordinator, he can play that single high safety. Mm. I think he could be that robber type guy. I think you can line him up all different places. You yeah. were there during the, the, the year when we talked to Tommy Kramer and mm -hmm. we talked to, you know, some other former Notre Dame guys who played with him and they yeah. told us a story about the first day he was there as a mm -hmm. freshman yeah. and had like six interceptions in the first insane. training camp That's practice. Insane. And that just translated for right. three years. Yeah. And so to me, I think he's going to be an interesting one too. He can be that guy that that, that you can do a lot of different things with. He's creative, kind of where the NFL is going. Mm -hmm. You know, he can cover tight ends and you could throw him in the slot high, maybe yeah. even. You can do a lot of different yep. things with him. So it'll be interesting. So to me, I think that's one Lions fans don't talk about a whole lot, but I think is in play. I still don't see the quarterbacks at two. I think that might be later if they do like one. But to me, it's, I think those three in the early, mm -hmm. very early start of this process, those are three that I think you that stand out to me. And I don't think Kyle Hamilton is a what about you? take at all. You, you can't <sighs> get off here not, not throwing out your opinion now. I know. I know. I'm going to solidify this more. I really am torn. You look I, torn. I, I, can you tell? Wow, I'm there really was like torn. a sigh there. I am so torn. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, to have, to, uh, just to start building a defense, and Grant, we know these Detroit Lions are going young. There's really no debate about that. Right. Their youth is on their mind. So to build a defense around a guy like Kayvon or Aiden right now, 
I can't pick. I refuse to pick. Well, you don't have to pick. Okay. Isn't that the great thing about being I know. number two? It now, really is. let's say now if they if Jacksonville takes Neil, the offensive tackle out of um, Alabama, let's say that's the pick at number one. And oh that's my, very I am too, so because glad. Jacksonville, if you think about it, they had quarterback last year, right? Yeah. But then they took a pass rusher in each of the the two drafts so before that. They don't really need one. So I don't know if they want to pick a, an edge rusher three of the last four years right. when you've got your franchise over there that you've got to protect. Yes. And so to me, if I'm Jacksonville, I think Neil makes a lot of sense. Offensive tackle at one. And when you talk value at the draft, it's quarterback, tackle, pass rusher. Yeah. So you're still getting value with player. Now, Danny Rogers, GM. I'm so glad I don't have, have that title. You have the number two pick, and it's between Thibodeau and Hutchinson. Who are you going? I, it's the Michigan bias. Just go ahead and say it. It's okay. Listen, Michigan lost. It's okay. I know which one you're going to take. It's, it's the Michigan bias. It's Hutchinson, isn't it? I Just would, nod your head. If it's listen, yes. I think <laughs> his energy, his effort, his enthusiasm. Do I sound like I, I came up straight out of Michigan now? Um, is Detroit. And that'll be the fun thing I think about that analysis is that okay. I think you're gonna he's gonna have all those intangibles. He, every and then single with intangible. With Thibodeau, you're gonna have the long arms, the better athletic traits, the bend. The tape's going to look a little bit better just from a pure athlete standpoint. But then but you got all... that's not necessarily what helped the Lions win games this year, you know? Correct. God, dude. I and that's a good I'm, point. I'm not... See, with Hutchinson, too, he seems to me like a Dan Campbell guy, Let's, you know? I wish we could ask Coach right now. I'm I know. comment on it. Um, More meetings. I, I mean, <laughs> I can't bet on anything. No, he, <laughs> I'm, t- I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, he you, did just walk by. Coach is kind of big over? chilling. No, See I'm not. Gonna, I can't. More. I put Coach on the spot. He won't answer me. But um, yeah, I think he. De- I think Aiden Hutchinson is definitely a Dan Campbell guy. Yeah, they would get like along it. extremely well. Let's put it this way: I don't think they can go wrong either way. I don't think so either. I think you know they have to add a young pass rusher, um, and I think either one they they get would fit the scheme. Yeah. They're both stand up three four outside edge guys. Mm-hmm. I think Aiden can probably do the, the hand in the dirt a little bit more than than Kayvon, Correct. but. Um, I think they fit either way. Yeah. And so it'll be Kyle Hamilton, though, is not a hot take to me because Aaron Glenn, he said his safeties are his quarterbacks of the defense. Look at and you. if Aaron Glenn has any say in this, do you think Aaron Glenn has a say in this? We're only, we've only been talking defensive guys. Okay. If you're, so if, if those are the three guys, I All think. All defense. Yeah, yeah. I think Aaron Glenn would. I think Brad, if he's. Yeah, I think Brad would go. Just like casual And be like, hey, chat. what do you think? What's more, what what gives you more value right now? If you're creating yeah. a defense on Sunday, does a guy like Kyle, where you can do a whole bunch of different things with, mm-hmm. what's the value in that? And get his input. Do you think this conversation is happening over coffee or beer? Oh, definitely beer. Or like some bourbon. I mean, we're here down in the South, you know, yeah. if, that, if it happens here. What's the drink down here? Do we know? PJ, what's the drink down here? Can you Google our southern Alabama Alabama people, bourbon people? I don't think anyone here is from Alabama right now. Currently, Um, do you get that? Is there like a special drink? It's probably a mint drink. No. Uh, Signature Mardi Gras drink, the Chrissy. Mardi Gras down here. Mardi Gras is down here, the home of the Mardi Gras. If you thought it was New Orleans, you're wrong. That parade, I think, is Friday. Friday. Yeah, that's fun. I heard it's a great time. Yeah. Great time. Throw, uh, I went walking down Mobile a little bit this afternoon, um, and they, they're already setting everything all up. I all mean, the, the Christmas trees. Mardi Gras stuff. Oh, yeah. There's Christmas trees everywhere, and I'm like, that was a month ago. Yeah. They don't care. If you ever get a chance to come down here for this, it, it is fun. If you're a football I've person, you got to like kind of be a diehard football person to sit through oh, four hours of practice sure. every day. And not know who is who at yeah. all and just love that. But, but Mobile is really great. The seafood's great. And if you love football, like our guy PJ right here. Yeah. A guy who loves just loves. Football. Oh, loves. Loves Like football. he's going to be four hours of practice. Like yeah. he loves that stuff. So, 100%. yeah. So that'll be fun. Okay. But, yeah, it's a good event. It's going to be a great week down here. I think the Lions are going to get a look at a lot of great talent. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's number two talent. Um but I think it's number yeah, 31, 32 round. talent, number 34 go. talent. Like, I think that's what you're looking for here. Mm-hmm. Um, and that'll be the fun part of kind of seeing who elevates themselves, who doesn't. Friday, I'll have my 10 players that impressed. Ooh. So, a little tease there. See how many of those guys Lions yeah, so who, who, yeah, yeah, so who kind of elevated their, their stock here? Um, and, and maybe who... 
who are those guys from small schools that teams do more work on? Or yeah. who are those guys that teams were like, wow, we maybe need to watch a little bit more film. You see how mm -hmm. that guy practiced on Wednesday? Yep. You know, that's the fun part of this week. And so it'll be really interesting to see which players kind of, you know, move up boards, which players don't impress as much. Maybe some of those big names mm -hmm. aren't as big, you know, next week as they were heading into this week. Right. So it's a fun week. Yeah, it definitely is. It's kind of the first thing that kicks off, right? It's it did, this. Yeah. And then we got, what, Combine? Yeah, they got pro and then days. Then we got pro days. Yeah. And and then so we all go to Vegas and have a blast. I think you go to Vegas. <laughs> Do you not come to Vegas? No. Tim, come on. I handle come on. I, this is the one year I'd love to go. Come on. I got to handle no. things in Allen Park. You Jeez. go gallivanting around to Las Vegas. Gallivanting? <laughs> is that what that word is? Yes. <laughs> Fine, I'll do it. I'll, if you ha insist. I'll handle things in Allen Park. Fine. You go ahead and go to Vegas. Fine. I'll, I'll, I will have no fun just for you. No, you'll have a lot of fun down there. We'll see. Over all right. There. Big thanks to Tim Twentyman. We could go on and on literally all day. Um, but we have work to do, so yeah, I think this isn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're 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 gonna Let's talk go chat with Brad. For we're gonna talk with Brad, Brad Holmes, and see what he's up to, and uh, get his first thoughts on being down here in Mobile as well, a have general fun manager. This week, your first you too. week. Thank you very much. Yes. I'll have some oysters for you. You will have fun. Have oysters. Go to Wetzel's. Okay. And then enjoy say football. Less. Literally say last. And the weather. The weather. <laughs> Sorry, fam. Back in Michigan. All right. For Tim Twentyman, I'm Danny Rogers. That was the one podcast. Stay tuned for lots of more podcast stories coming up this week as we cover the Reese's Senior Bowl in Mobile, Alabama.